whatever situation you face in your life right now, take it to Jesus in prayer. I was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. But we went back there, they did the mammogram and sonogram, and you can actually see what they see. So I saw the mass, and I knew that there was an issue. And I had several biopsies. They didn't find anything until August of 2000. And that's when they found cancer cells. I was diagnosed uh, in 2005. I was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer. I was diagnosed in 1995 with breast cancer, and I had my surgery in 96 of January. I was diagnosed in uh, the year 2000. Very shocking when, uh, I guess the last thing on my mind at the time that I went to the doctor and had the test, it was like, I know this is gonna be absolutely nothing. And when I went back to him for the results of the biopsy, he said, I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is you do have cancer. The good news is in the early stages. I guess when we finally had to come to terms with the fact that she did have breast cancer was when we started to looking at each other. And I remember my daughter saying to me, she said, well, um, what are we going to do? And I said, well, I don't know. What are we going to do? She says, we're going to do the same thing we've always done. I said, well, okay, all right, he says, I'm going to live. Every side effect that could have, that's in the textbooks that could have occurred, did occur. Uh, within 10 to 14 days of my very first cancer treatment, my very first chemo treatment, every hair on my whole entire body was gone. Eyebrows, eyelashes, I mean everything. Sores in the mouth, feet were so sore and dry and cracking because the drugs were so aggressive that I could barely walk. My nails fell off, pale, insomnia, vomiting, the whole nine yards. It was very intense. It changed her body structure. She said to me one day, she says, you know, I don't even know who I am. When I look in the mirror, I just know that it's my voice. So that was a hard part, to see her change and the weight that it caused her to pick up. She just got to be so heavy. And then she ended up on the cane. And those, I think, were the hardest three parts of watching her go through. So I was picturing myself as a skinny, bald-haired person, and that wasn't cute to me, so, so I was like, no, I don't want to go through this. So all those combined were just in my mind, and I was just basically just scared. Well, the whole family, of course, was upset about it, and none of us really understood what prostate cancer was. It was just something that other people get rather than, in this case, me personally. It's a drastic thought process to say, wait a minute, I may die in a few years, and there's nothing known that will cure what I have. My oncologist was so awesome because he kept telling me, I have to do this because I have to kill every cancer cell in your body because I will not allow you to die. I'm very faithful and my mother is also and my family and friends are so all that support helped me and my mother just told me you know God wouldn't bring you this far now to let you go. My mom um, she's um, she's a praying mom you know you always have your you know your praying mom who prays for you and, and all that so I, I waited a while because I didn't really know how to tell her you know I wanted to make sure I, I got all the, the answers and knew what stage I was what what treatment if, if needed what had to be done. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. When she was diagnosed, it was as if I was diagnosed. So we both suffered together. And we both kind of like, it's okay. We're going to be all right. And that's, that was how we did it. 
And that went on from 1999 to um, 2003 when she died. You should not take on the burden by yourself. It's important to share it with significant others, your, your spouse, your partner, whoever that may be, and your family, because they care about you, and they want to know that you're okay. One of the members at the church had also been diagnosed with breast cancer, and she was doing support groups. She was doing presentation for us, going out to the community, telling women to do breast self exam. So she was my support. I had friends at the American Cancer Society. I had friends that had gone through breast cancer, and I was just meeting them, you know, around the time that I was diagnosed. And I just became friends with, with a lot of women. My church was my everything. It was my everything. Other than my relationship with God. I think we've always looked at the church because it's always been there. That was all that we had, you know, when we were singing our songs and come together. We couldn't depend on anyone else but ourselves. I believe that the church is a outlet for God to be able to speak to his people. In speaking through his people, he enables people to come into our lives so that they can encourage so that they can assist in any way, so that they can um, just be there for one another. One of the issues in so far as African Americans is we don't get examined, so you might have it for years and not know it, and once uh, you're examined and they find out you have it, it may be well too late to do anything about it. There's like seven siblings I have. One, actually my sister just passed um, last year. But uh, all, everyone but one, I have one brother that hasn't had the uh, colonoscopy, so I'm still on him. Many African American men will tell you, I am not going to go for an examination. I've been there, and I said for six years, I've gone and I, uh, specifically go to underserved areas all the time and try to tell them, go get an examination. And many of them look at me and say, I'm not going to do it. And within the black male community, and I make a distinction between males and men, prostate cancer is the last thing they want to talk about because to a black male, his, his, his macho, his sexuality is associated with his organ. And if that is in jeopardy, then I am less of a man in the eyes of women, and therefore I am not about to find out. I am not about to go get tested. I can play ostrich and not know. Next and really important is a lot of the persons who would have gone to a doctor and had it diagnosed didn't have the money. And that's one of the good things that I think that American Cancer Society is doing for us and saying get out there and get examined early. A lot of times women let that fear keep them away, period. They don't want to know about it. They don't want to get a mammogram because a mammogram hurts and you know they just figure if they don't find out then it's okay. But I just try to encourage everyone I talk to just try to get something, just try to get it checked out. If it is something let's deal with it early on because your prognosis for your life is so much better. I had a doctor who said, well, when, when are you going to do this, you know, when, which was good for me because evidently I had forgotten about it when, when I should, I knew it's in the back of my mind, but uh, I know that early prevention, you know, er everyone should know, hey, by a certain age, these are certain things you, you need to do. I think over the years with the American Cancer Society, the um, awareness has increased. People are learning that cancer is not necessarily a diagnosis of death. Uh, that uh, just because you're black that you still have the option can come in and get supplies from the American Cancer Society or you should be able to go out to find some services for yourself. Education for me was powerful and the knowledge I gained from reading about prostate cancer caused me to not even think of it other than a natural occurrence of some kind of disease that was likely coming my way because it is hereditary. One of our members had had breast cancer 25 years ago. Nobody knew. And she, uh, her daughter, I think, was even 
she was like surprised that she mentioned it. But she told me later on after uh, we had uh, the little service, she was like, I am so glad that you're doing this. Because when I was diagnosed, there was nobody talking about cancer. It was the big C. Or you didn't dare tell anyone you had breast cancer. In the black community, a, a lot of things weren't talked about. And cancer especially was not talked about. Being diagnosed with cancer doesn't mean that life stops. Hopefully it will make you pick up and start a new life and press on because it's not a death sentence anymore. Early detection, prevention, doing mammograms, annual breast examinations, you doing breast self examination can be a life-saving measure for you. My name is Kimberly Higginbotham and I'm an eight-year survivor of stage 2B breast cancer. My name is Frederick Blanchard and I'm an eight-year survivor of prostate cancer. My name is Janet Cooper Pitts and I'm a four-year cancer survivor. I'm Shirley Harrison. My daughter, Charmaine Harrison, died of breast cancer. My name is Celeste Conyers and I am a two-year colon cancer survivor and I'm thankful. Hello, my name is Joshua Kevin White. I serve as the pastor of Church of the Great Commission in Camp Springs, Maryland. You've just heard testimonies of love and victory. Victory where God can give to you. What I want you to know today is that in the book of Romans, Paul asks a question, who should separate us from the love of Christ? But he also answers, he says nothing. He said, in all these things, we are more than conquerors in his love. I want you to know that God, regardless of whatever you may be going through, can give you the victory. We have the victory. Know that his love is always abiding with you. Know that God loves you, and so do we. They found out that I was probably going to have to have in vitro fertilization to have children. That's what I was told. So, you know, we prayed about it and just prayed God would prove them wrong. And he did, and I'm due in January with a little boy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.